Ever wondered how I get that fantastic b-roll of my spiders and praying mantises? In this video, you're going to find out. In this particular project, I'm going to show you how I capture my b-roll of my spiders and mantises for use in my YouTube videos. I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to get the best footage for your project. So we have a basic scene set up here. This is uh, just some lilies that have opened up, they've bloomed. We have Bungie, he's inside the flower at the moment. And what I wanna do is I wanna take you through a very simple B-roll technique that I do to get the B-roll of my uh, pets. In the last video, I hinted how my style changes when going from photography to video. Now, the fundamentals of video and photography are roughly the same. I do have a difference in technique when it comes to videoing these small creatures. So the first difference in technique is I always use a tripod for doing my B-roll. The same as in photography, you want to get low down to your subject. So the tripod is here, it's just out of frame. The very first basic shot I do is just a static shot where the creature walks into frame or walks out of frame. So for that I'm going to be using my EOS R. So the very first step I need to do is to flip over to video mode. So I'm going to click my mode button and then I'm going to go over to video. And I have three presets set up on this camera. One is for 4K, one is for HD at 24 frames a second and the other one is HD at 60 frames a second. When I'm using the Canon EOS R I am shooting in C-Log. So first of all we're going to talk about just a standard cut of B-roll. Now for that, I'm going to film in 60 frames a second. So I would recommend the highest frame rate possible for your camera. Now in this case, it is 60 frames a second. Um, I film in 24 frames a second so that I can slow down my B-roll, which is shot at 60 frames a second, to 40%. For the first type of B-roll shot I'm going to show you is a static shot. The camera is locked off on the tripod. We have our spider inside the flower. It's a wide angle shot. So now we have the uh, the subject and the camera set up, we need to sort out lighting. So for the lighting, what I use is this. This is a New Year CN 304 LED light, and it's a very budget friendly light. So this goes up top here. So you can see now how that is lighting the subject, and it's slightly black backlit, okay? Very harsh light, however. Now, to fix that, I have this here. This is just tracing paper. And all I do is I put this up top here. That softens the light. Now, I haven't got it up at the moment because obviously it covers up the overhead camera. But as you can see from the B-roll I've recorded here, you can see how it softens up the light. What we want to do now, we have that set up, is we need to introduce some light from the front just to fill in the front and the shadows. So again, this is another new video light. This one is the PT176S, another budget-friendly video light. Now these are powered by Sony batteries. Pop that in, and I can turn it on. And I will adjust the power of these lights depending on the frame rate, okay? So let's talk about the differences between the video and the photography. In the video, my shutter speed is fixed. Now the shutter speed is double that of your frame rate. So in this case, we are shooting at 60 frames a second. So your shutter is as close as the 1 20th of a second as you can. On this camera, that's 1 25th of a second. Now because of that, I can't adjust that shutter speed. So I have to adjust other parameters in order to get the correct exposure. But when we go over to the macro lens, we will need to increase our f-stop. In which case, you have to increase your ISO. So for this particular shot, we are slightly overexposed. So I'm going to use my front control ring here to adjust my aperture. And then I will bring it down. We shall press record and then we will get the spider to do different things. So he's running around, moving back and forward, and we capture that footage. Once we have that footage captured, we can go into Premiere. We are on a 24p timeline. Right click on the footage. Go to speed and duration. We can now type in 40% on our speed to slow it down by 40%. Of course, you don't have to slow it down. It's completely up to you from shot to shot as to what speed you use. 
Again, the higher frame rate, the better your outcome will be. I really wish Canon would put 120 frames a second onto their cameras. So the next step up you can do is have something like this. This is a Ronin S gimbal and I can attach my EOS R with the macro lens on it and I can control my camera very smoothly using this. Now I'm not going to cover that in this video because that's a video in its own right. So if you would like to see that video about using the Ronin S to capture uh, smooth cinematic B-roll, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if I can put one together for you. But the next step up to give a little bit more of a cinematic look to this is to be able to move your camera. Now, you can try and brave it by hand holding your camera. Again, we're at 60 frames a second. So what we can do is turn it on and we can just go from left to right very slowly. So that method is very hit and miss and you can't tell from in the camera whether you've got a good shot or not. You don't know until you get back to post processing and in most cases you haven't. But there is a solution and this is the solution. This is a Micro 2 slider from Zpon. So Zpon have supplied this free of charge to me to do a review and I've been using it since December. So for this what I want to do is take off my tripod head. Okay so that's the head off my tripod. I'm going to put this on here. So we are now set up for our second shot. Okay? Now we have the Canon 100mm macro lens on here. And I will literally just point it straight to the spider. Manual focus. I'm going to use my control ring to set it up for f7.1. And then usually I will use ISO 800 or 1600 depending on the type of shot that I'm going for. So with this setup now, we're going to point it towards Bungie. Focus. As you can see, I have focus peaking on this camera as well. And while it's there, I will just press record and we will just leave it for a few seconds to grab some static shots of Bungie while he's just sitting there on that flower. So this is where the magic comes with this slider. So now we have Bungie focused. We have him in the center of the frame. What I can do is just unlock this slider and with my finger, now I can just pull the camera from left to right very smooth. The dampeners on this slider are fantastic. And you can get some really nice side to side B-roll shots. This is how I'm doing my product B-roll shot. So if you see a camera like this shot here, the only difference is we've got a smooth black background with two lights either side. And that is how I'm doing those current B-rolls. Well, that's not my favourite shot. This is going to be my favourite shot, what I'm going to show you now. To accomplish this shot, we need to switch our lens back to autofocus and using Canon's amazing dual pixel autofocus, we're going to click on our subject. I'm going to loosen the tripod head. Okay, we have the focus set on Bungie now. Okay, and what I'm going to do is move the slider out to the right, out to the left, sorry. I'm going to grab my lens and my tripod head here because I'm not using a fluid tripod head, okay? There'll be some video professionals out there that'll be laughing at me right now doing this. I don't have a fluid tripod, okay? So this makes it a little bit harder, but you work with what you got, okay? So I'm gonna press record. We have Bungie focused. I'm gonna move the camera from left to right, but at the same time, I'm also going to pan using my video head. So here we go. There we go. Fabulous shot. So again, we're going to go into Premiere in our 24p timeline. We're going to throw this footage onto the timeline. We're going to right click to time duration, hit 40%. Next, we're going to right click on that footage and click Nest. Once we've done that, we can go into our effects, choose Warp Stabilizer, throw that onto the timeline and generally I don't touch any of the settings. I'll just let it do its calculation. We'll pre-render and view that footage. And that just looks marvellous. Absolutely fantastic. I'm absolutely loving this slider at the moment. And there will be a review of this slider coming to the channel very soon. So subscribe if you're looking forward to that. So the third type of shot I like to get now is this typical shot here. So Bungie's backed off. I cannot get a really close-up shot with this current setup. Now... I can put extension tubes onto this lens. I can also use the Rhinox, but 
I'm finding the Rhinox is giving a 70s porn vibe for some reason when you're doing video. I'm not too sure why. I haven't found out why. The extension tubes reduce light and even at maximum, these lights are not powerful enough to get clean footage. And I have to emphasize clean footage. I don't like noise in my footage, okay? So this is where we will swap over to 4K. When this EOS R was released, everyone panned it because it has 4K crop. Me, I sat down and thought that would be fantastic for macro video. I'm going to take some footage now. We're not going to do a sliding move or anything. We're just going to take static shots, okay? And what happens here is you are cropped in by, I believe it's 1.7 on the sensor. So you get in that perception that you are closer to your subject. Now we've been 4K as well. So I'm now going to put this 4K footage onto my 1080p timeline. And then I can zoom in, out. I can pan it around however I want. I can reframe if I want to. And if I want to get as close as possible, all I got to do is just leave it at 100% on the scale. Again, with everything, patience is the best thing you can do. Just have patience. Let the subject come to you. Video him. And again, practice makes perfect. Practice is one of the most skillful lessons you can learn better than new cameras it's better than new lenses practice 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 that's my tip to you so that is how i do my three types of b-roll when talking about macro photography just to cover up those ugly jump cuts that every other youtuber does out there which i find awful i hate it i really hate jump cuts that's it for this video if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i want to thank you for getting to the end of this particular video i'm from bungie and from me we'll see you on the next one share my b-roll of my spiders and praying mantises now mantises hello my name's Stuart wood and welcome to this video in this video i'm going to show you i'm going to be giving you some tips on how to get the best footage for your project Again, blah, 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 blah. In the last video, in the last video, I showed you how to handle, no, not show, tips, okay, tips, 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 okay. So first of all, I hinted in the last video that uh, doing the video of these spiders and praying mantises, a difference in technique when, I, when it comes to photographing. I do have a different. This is a micro two slider from Zepo Tech. Zepo. Now, when this EOS R was released, everyone. But for now, from me, 